Oh, so just put that. Okay. What's the um, what's the page page for the live stream? It's on our home page. You go heritage.com. It's still up, right? Yeah. Hey. All right. Hey, good to see you. Can I sit in the front? You can sit in the front. <laughs> Tom, do you want to uncover it live? If there's if it's up here, how do we, I thought it would just publish automatically? Do I have to get the plus button? Is that right here? And this is bad comments. I can't wait to hear. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Sorry? Yep, we're good yep, to I go. Can see for having me here. Um, my name is Ed Vilmedi. Um, I'm one of the editors of Arbor Wiki, um, which is a online encyclopedia about everything in Washtenaw County that people can freely edit. Uh, the title of my talk tonight is Building a City Wiki. Um, I'll try to take questions from people as things go up, or if there's questions from online, I can take those as someone will help me feel them. Um, the, uh, the project I'm going to talk about is a project called ArborWiki. Um, it, uh, but before I go into a lot of details about it, I want to sort of set the stage uh, for people who aren't quite as familiar with Wiki software. Um, the biggest example of Wiki software is Wikipedia, which has um, global use and uh, especially for people writing term papers. Um, it's an uh, encyclopedia of everything, and it covers everything that's notable uh, around the world. Um, city wikis, and of which Arbor Wiki is only one of them, um, don't try to cover everything around the world. Um, they use the familiar wiki software, but they try to scope what they're doing so that it's relevant to one um, geographical area. And they also skip most of Wikipedia's rules and regulations. If you've ever 
gone deep into the Wikipedia weeds, um, you know that there's a whole host of people there uh, behind the scenes uh, editing pages, um, proposing pages for deletion if they don't think they're notable enough. So a lot of the things inside ArborWiki wouldn't really qualify for Wikipedia because they're not important enough from a worldwide perspective. Uh, they don't really care what the hours are at your favorite you know, cheesesteak place. Anyone in ArborWiki might care about that. So it's, you know, it's using tools that are familiar to some people, uh, trying to leverage um, uh, some existing practices, but skipping, skipping ahead of that. So about ArborWiki, um, ArborWiki started in 2005. Uh, it was a project uh, that originally started from some folks at Ann Arbor's Community High School. Um, it uh, got its initial start running on servers um, at the high school and then went off to uh, some private uh, servers that were run by the people who had started it. Um, it covers primarily Washtenaw County, although if something interesting enough happens at the fringes of the county that seems to be local enough to count, um, we'll include it. The best coverage, I'd say, is of Ann Arbor. Um, there's pretty reasonable coverage in the same sense of its many, also uh, Chelsea, Dexter, and then to a much lesser extent, um, Manchester and the various townships. Um, at this point, there's over 7,500 different pages of content, um, ranging from long and elaborate things that have been edited hundreds of times, all the way down to very short um, links to the home page for business, but really not much of a discussion. Um, and since its beginning, um, it has been growing at a pace of about, after the initial sort of growth from zero to something, um, growth from last year to this year is about 20% of page views. So um, it's still, I think, not has not yet reached whatever maximum you could expect um, from people using it and people contributing to it. Um, so getting started with ArborWiki, um, or getting started thinking of what we did to, to get this thing run, um, the first uh, the first thing, if you are, if you can imagine yourself inside a system that's encyclopedic that has nothing in it, like where do you start building an encyclopedia? Um, and what we ended up doing, um, somewhat uh, deliberately and somewhat accidentally, was finding people who had built really good lists of local things, and either getting permission or simply copying them in and starting to edit them and then filling out things from the edges to, to make things work. Um, and then when it looked like that long list was missing something, go inside and insert more things to that. It's very much a bootstrapping process. You, you, you don't start with you don't start with a long list. You start with Main Street, or you start with a list of your favorite restaurants, or you start with a list of something, and you work out what's from there. Um, so I want to talk about some of the things that have been really successful in our work. Um, these are pages that uh, regularly uh, get noticed uh, when people talk about things in the community. Uh, they're, they're part of uh, the civic discussion about things. They're popular enough to uh, change how people think about the town. And I think that's probably the biggest, the biggest thing that you could hope for is to be part of the discussion. Um, the most popular of all of the things that ArborWiki has ever done um, is a big long list of all the free things that you can get on your thing. Um, I, had, you would, I would not have guessed this, right? It's not something you could predict. But it started as a, um, you know, what's not to like about free things on your birthday. Um, it started as a post on the blogging site LiveJournal. Uh, we copied it in in 2006 or thereabouts, and since then, uh, over 500 times that list has been updated to be current with uh, information about things. So it's like adding a new restaurant, confirming that a restaurant still offers a deal, uh, confirming that they no longer offer a deal, uh, 
reorganizing the list at various times. At, at one point, it was alphabetical, and we broke it into breakfast, lunch, and dinner stuff. Um, so a constant process of change. Um, the the fun thing about the birthday deals list is that it was a important enough document that people started sharing it, even though they didn't really know very much about HarperWiki. Right? It was just one long page. Uh, easy to send to your friend, easy to welcome someone as a to town with, hey, it's your birthday when you're coming to town. Oh, you should look at this list. And so it gets referenced from all parts of the internet. Um, people sending it on Facebook, Facebook, um, other other different social sites as a as a list that people do. And so uh, when when you're lucky, um, readers will confirm the details. Um, it's a very difficult list to keep current because uh, restaurants change their deals all the time. Um, in fact, we think, although we're not really sure, that the popularity of the birthday deals list uh, prompted Zimmerman's to change their birthday deals because so many people have found out about them. Uh, they no longer give out free bagels on your birthday, but they have six or seven different deals in, in different places. So, you know, just. Uh, enough of a of a presence in the community so that um, you know, if someone wants to, to find out if someone has a birthday you can greet them with something useful. Um, so that's that's a success. And to, to make that work, um, we made this big long list of restaurants. But then for each of the each of the restaurants or businesses that offer a birthday gift or deal, um, we made a link to that rest, restaurant or business um, or organization. And when you click on that link, it goes to the page for that organization inside ArborWiki, which may just be a link to that organization's homepage. Hopefully, we will have copied out their address and their phone number. We might have some reviews, either written by readers or um, excerpted from other uh, things. Uh, we'll often have a link to review sites like Yelp, which has a really easy way of linking to reviews. Um, and so you can go a little bit deeper into things. Um, everything is categorized as best we can, so if you find one, one uh, Indian restaurant, you can relatively quickly click to find the list of all the other ones. So it's, you know, it's a list that starts out as a, as a way of, of telling people about um, resources available in town. A very similar list to that, but not quite as um, Skip a little bit. Um, is the list of lost eateries. Um, this is kind of the opposite of the current deals in town. These are all the business, all of the restaurants that have ever gone into business. Um, it, it's not what's new, it's what's old. And it gets the same sort of um, a list that gets passed around whenever you have a high school reunion or uh, anyone having nostalgia about their college days. Um, often, the record in ArborWiki of uh, a business that closed down 25 years ago is the very best information about that business that's online anywhere. Um, so we'll go back and um, share old photos, uh, old news clippings if we can find them, um, other sorts of uh, historical information, and sort of fill out uh, parts of what the parts of what used to be around. Um, another type of page that people find, although it's not really, they don't really realize that it's part of our wiki when they find it. Um, every once in a while, the power goes out in the area, um, mostly during storms, but sometimes not. Um, DTE Energy has a power outage map on the website, but it's buried like three or four pages deep. Um, and if you didn't know that you're, if you didn't know better, you might have a hard time finding it. And so uh, we have a page simply named DTE Power Outage Map, and it has a link to the DTE page, plus a short history of the major storms that have gone through the area. And what's fun about this page is that the traffic to the page predicts the power outages in the area. So you can go back and see um, when, when various um, you know, major outage events happen. Uh, there's a similar page that uh, called about noise ordinances. Um, 
most of the traffic for that page is late at night when it's noisy out in some near campus neighborhood. And we're sure that people are Googling for, you know, how to complain about uh, how to complain about their neighbors and their finding. Another good list. Um, some of these are good lists. Some of these are are, are, are just uh, things that have worked. Um, at one point, a group of people who were associated with the project were trying to find a location for a meeting um, for, a, for a small conference. And so we put together uh, a list of all the places that we considered, including the ones that we used and a bunch of ones that we didn't. And the places to hold a meeting page um, is this big, sprawling, long list of uh, a bunch of different uh, locations where you can get anywhere from eight to 107,000 people in for an event. Um, and at, at best, it includes uh, how many square feet are there, uh, a con contact information, maybe a contact person. Um, it's the sort of information that's useful all the time. It's, if you think of it, there's no one sees for that information. It's, it's helpful always. Um, and it's a, it's a real good starting place if someone finds it to, to find more about it. Um, a very seasonal page is our sledding page, which has a list of all the great sledding hills in the neighborhood. Um, you wouldn't think of that as being encyclopedic, but it turns out with the current climate, you only need it two or three days a year, and you don't really know when those two or three days are going to be. And so it gets updated every season. Um, <clears throat> and there's a really good a page of volunteer opportunities for youth and teens that I was surprised, but I guess I shouldn't be, that people looking for volunteer information, it was a consolidated spot for, for that. So that gives you some idea, um, some idea of the range of civic information that's there. Um, you know, if, if you compare Arbor Wiki with Wikipedia, um, what you find is that um, it's very much about the small details of an area and not so much about the grand uh, things. It's useful uh, in a lot of ways, but we don't try to be, we don't try to be grand about um, what we're doing. And that means collecting a lot of detail uh, about a lot of, pretty much uh, anything that you would see in uppercase in a newspaper article was fair game. Um, any uh, any person who's made it into the paper is fair game. Um, any business that's ever existed is within scope. Um, so local information and, and tending towards thorough rather than tending towards known. How do people find ArborWiki? About two thirds of the traffic to ArborWiki is from searches. Almost all of which are from Google. Um, people search for. Um, uh, I think the top search terms are variations on Anna with their videos. Um, again, sort of mimicking the, the, the top pages. Um, deeper links to the site come from uh, a variety of online uh, news sources. Occasionally, a newspaper or a news magazine will publish a link, especially if they're linking to something that doesn't, it's no longer in business, um, which is a good one. Well, it doesn't really have a current web page, but still needs presence uh, online. Um, in other cases, the links will come from um, Facebook or something else where people are sharing things. Um, every once in a while, uh, as part of the Arbor Wiki collection is uh, local history. So as best we can, there's a page for every mayor in any local town, uh, a page um, for a surprising number of people who came on city council in Ann Arbor. Um, pages for you know restaurants that have, that have gone gone away. Um, there's a, a reasonable collection of links to uh, tornadoes and other sorts of disaster events from, from the past. And so once in a while, um, the Ann Arbor District Library has a little bit history blog, and we try to work um, as best we can with them, both to link to the local history information that they collect, as well as uh, having something for them to look from. And then local blogs and bloggers, um, you never really can predict what a blogger will be interested in, but often there's something uh, that's, that's going on that's, that's of interest. So why would you spend all this energy on, um, on working on a local wiki and not um, do something else with your life? Um, I've been 
crank, you know, that's, that's, a, that's a reasonable question. Um, the, I've been working away at this for about seven years, um, which seems like a long time. Um, there are dozens of people who have contributed, who have contributed considerable amounts of information, and then probably hundreds who have edited the birthday deals page once. Um, or edited something once or sort of going in being useful in the wrong way. Um, the, the biggest thing for me is um, you know if you're gonna if you're gonna get invested in a project and you want to look at an alternate project, you'd look at something like Wikipedia as being the, the you know the similar sort of thing where you could obsess about an area as um, you know dig away for a long time and really never end. And one of the things about Wiki, Wikipedia is that uh, local history is really not that interesting to Wikipedia. Uh, the, um, the short biographical details of a city council person from the mid-1940s or an account of a mayoral election you know, might, uh, might warrant um, three sentences in Wikipedia. Yet, <clears throat> from a local history perspective, there might be uh, half a dozen or a dozen different sources that you're going to try to put together. And so the other thing about, about Wikipedia is that Wikipedia has a, a neutral point of view um, ethos and um, some fairly strict notability guidelines. And so it's a really bad place to try to experiment with things. And if you have some idea of how to organize uh, information um, in this kind of structure, it's a, it's a really hard place to play because anything you do has to match up with the structures that um, uh, a bunch of editors around the world who don't necessarily care or know about your project are going to have to work on. And, and frankly, it's been fun to put together um, a team of people that knows enough local detail and that's interested enough in things um, to, to be helpful. So it's, you know, it's, it's the sort of thing, uh, I worked for about a year and a half at Hanover.com, and I was writing about local issues all the time, and it was just tremendously helpful to have uh, a fairly comprehensive clipping set of issues that had come up. Uh, I'm not doing that anymore, and so my pace of edits has, has slackened off. But I'm st I still, you know, want to pass a part that's named after someone, and I want to know who that person was. Um, that sort of, or walk up to a to a uh, to a restaurant and wonder what all the reviews were for that place, or what the health inspection was for, um, and to make all that information fairly accessible, I think is a is a worthwhile goal. So, so how do we get? Um, how does our wiki get updated? Or where are the sources for it? Um, one of the things that has been crucial about the process is reading the newspaper. There's um, no better way to be informed about what's happening in the community than to pick up, um, pick up the local newspaper, uh, look, at, uh, look at the stories that are in it, um, identify anything that's called out by name, see if this wiki that you think is local history or local information has any information about it. And if it doesn't have enough information about it, uh, edit it until it's working or until it's fixed. So um, the business section is really wonderful for business openings and closings. Uh, features are great for information about uh, people who are noteworthy. Um, when there's government news, um, elections or, or various things, it's, it's very helpful to, to go through and do that. Um, other sources for information, most local governments have um, websites ranging in quality from really quite good to minimal, um, but if you want to find out um, where people are, what people are doing in a given area, it's useful to have links, you know, systematic links to all of the government sites in the area. Um, for businesses, review sites like Yelp are good for opinion, to, for collecting opinions about things, in part because it's Yelp has a very easy and predictable way of linking to things. 
to collect photographs. Um, uh, one trick is to go to the various city assessor sites or township assessor sites um, that we've collected pointers to and go into those and you can usually get the front of the building. It might not be a current picture, but it's, it's something. So if you need to illustrate a story with a, with a picture and haven't gone out to do it. Um, there are a number of local historians uh, in the area, the Ipsland Historical Society, the, um, uh, the Washington County Historical Society are, are two that I know of that are really good as well as they've done the historical library. Um, they can be an excellent source for information about things that have long uh, since passed. Um, or if you have a genealogy interests, um, there's various national grave site information so you can find where someone's buried and often a little biography for that. Um, some photo sharing sites, notably Flickr, um, is really good for pinpointing where stuff is geographically so you can search for things within a geographic area and find that and um, either link to those photos or ask permission to include them in the project. And every once in a while, um, someone wanders in to the project, knows enough about the software, and starts contributing, you know, without being recruited. Um, the best uh, example of that was a fellow who has contributed a bunch of photographs to Wikipedia, uh, who took photos of 40 or 50 different churches in the area. And so we have this collection of, of church photographs. And uh, I couldn't have predicted that it would show up, and he's more or less disappeared. And thank, you know, thank you, Mike, for doing it, um, but I don't really know him very well. Um, and uh, sort of this, if you if you leave a big enough space for contributing to a project that's obviously public and open, uh, people who have something to share can do it. Um, I want to say more about clipping the newspaper because of, because of how important it is. For years, the Ann Arbor District Library had librarians who cut out important articles out of the paper and paste them onto um, paste them onto um, cardstock, uh, index them, date stamp them, and file them away. And this project is now turned into the Ann Arbor District Library's World News project where they have an extensive archive of those uh, that went from being paper-based to being digitized. And the digitization process is not over, um, but there's a contact information at the Ann Arbor Library to, if you want to research something if in the past, you can go and, and track something down. Um, newspapers are great uh, for uh, business openings and closings, which can be the only way sometimes you find out that something is Open is when it closes, occasionally, um, uh, and also for reviews. Um, obituaries are, are a fascinating way to get information about um, people's lives and about organizations uh, from, from the area. Uh, one challenge is that the current uh, news environment, uh, the, the size of the, all of the newspapers in the area is smaller than it was when uh, library could clip every day, and so there's a little bit less to go on than, than there might be. Um, one of the things that we have done as best we can is uh, try to look for reviews uh, for restaurants, and here again, um, the sources for these things come come from a bunch of places. Uh, Yelp has been the standby for, for figuring out uh, if anyone has a, a review of anything, Yelp is likely to have something there. They've been clearly the most comprehensive of that. And there's a little template in ArborWiki that lets you link to a Yelp page and, and have it show and have the link happen. Um, otherwise, uh, reviews of restaurants especially come from newspapers, they come from bloggers. Every once in a while, someone just types in a review right into ArborWiki. Um, if this was Wikipedia, that would be deleted as, in, as original research. But we love original research, especially if it's done well. So sometimes we get reviews of, of things uh, straight in. Um, for a while, we had it set up so that if you clicked on a link to the restaurant inspection for that restaurant, 
it would go straight to the restaurant inspection details and you could see what was going on in the kitchen for various places. That service is run by the county health department, but they subcontracted out to an organization to change the way that they organize their website. So now you have to, there's a link to it still, but you have to search again to find it. Um, generally, reviews are part and parcel of, of what uh, an org uh, setup like this can do. Um, especially if you think that the you've got the most popular page being your free things for your birthday. So a restaurant link there is going to go to a page that's relatively frequently used. And then if you can tell someone a little bit about what they're going to expect and links to more detail, but that's really helpful and it's really useful. <coughs> so, Local history is fun. Um, local history is often pursued by people who are looking for information about their ancestors, um, who have artifacts from years and years and years ago that they're looking for something more about, um, who are enthusiasts in one very narrow area, like football enthusiasts, and who know everything about every football game ever played, um, who collect photographs, who troll eBay auctions looking for memorabilia or, or other things up for sale. Um, and the, the most notable historian that I try to keep tabs on and follow around and be helpful to is a fellow by the name of Winston Stevens, um, who has organized uh, cemetery tours at the Forest Hill Cemetery for, for a number of years. And he is always posting to his Flickr account um, photos that he's taken himself or eBay auctions that he's bid on, whether he's won them or not, um, of um, old letters, old advertising knickknacks, um, you name it. If he's, if he's found it, he'll include it. And so the, the challenges for each of these, um, you know, if you're thinking, okay, here's a bunch of old. Here's a bunch of history. Uh, what can you add from it from a local history perspective? Um, sometimes you know a little bit more. You know at least as much about this because you've heard him talk about this before, and so you could reference back to the old page for it. Um, other times it's a matter of searching a little bit more or, or adding to it. Um, other good sources for local history. I haven't mentioned obituaries before. Obituaries can be a great source of detail about um, things in the distant and not too distant past. Um, there's a website called Find a Grave, which has uh, pretty good records of, of cemeteries throughout the nation. Um, and there's a couple of uh, county histories that go back to the turn of the last century, um, which were uh, basically short biographies of every eminent citizen run into the thousands of pages. So there's no, there's really no end to what you can do to, to index that or to it. I mentioned using Flickr for, for photographs. Um, Flickr uh, is uh, an interesting site to draw from for, for inspiration. It's also useful because it's very, um, very explicit in how it licenses pictures. So you can tell at a glance whether the person who took a picture wants the picture to be shared or wants the picture not to be shared beyond Flickr. Um, it's, we've included a number of photographs from the area directly from Flickr. Um, you know, pictures of the countryside, um, pictures of various businesses, pictures of various historic buildings or, or whatnot have all been added in. Um, and partly it's to identify photographers who may have an interest in what you're doing, especially if you can contribute something back to them and um, ask them permission, even if those photos are nominally uh, copyrighted, to uh, make a special exception for a particular photograph to use it. Uh, it's been a good, it's been a good source of 
finding photographers, especially um, people who like architecture, are really good because they're always interested in the details of the buildings that they take, that they take pictures of. So ArborWiki, I think, is a, is a product of two things. Um, it's a long-term project with um, some institutional support and some long-term contributors who, who care about it. And then it's a spot where people who have a temporary enthusiasm or temporary interest can show up, uh, contribute something, and walk away. Um, every so often, someone shows up to help. Um, it's completely, it's not completely random because some of the pages really cry out for small amounts of help done over and over and over again. Um, other times, uh, you know, some, someone who is involved with an organization will take ownership of the pages for their own organization and uh, make sure that those are up to speed. Um, but you know, you, can, you can't really predict when random help will come by, but you can certainly encourage it. And part of that is being as friendly to newcomers as we can. Um, that's a little bit difficult because the wiki software by its nature is a little bit cumbersome. Um, it's the Wikipedia software, so it's extraordinarily powerful if you're writing an encyclopedia. But it has a lot of deficiencies in terms of just sitting down and you click out of this page and you see not only words, but you see a bunch of punctuation that doesn't necessarily make sense. And so it can be, it can be off-putting to people. Um, other things that are really missing from the project, if you want to sort of say, well, what's, uh, you're, you're seven years into a project that might be a 30 year project, might be, might be you know, what's, what's missing? Uh, many of the articles are too short. Um, we've got only a few words about someone, or there's just a link to the business's homepage and their address, but not even a one, uh, one sentence kind of description. Um, so there's there's always room to um, make things longer up to a certain you know, reasonable length. Um, many many articles are also too old. Um, information and stuff like this ages. Uh, for a while, I was trying to keep things up to everything that had been edited over the span of the last year, and that just turns out to be not humanly possible. Um, so. Instead, I think the oldest pages are almost three years old now. And you sort of pick, you can always pick off, you know, sit down and say, I'm going to spend an hour looking at the old pages and see if any of them have changed, right? Let's see what's new well, for things. The, the biggest problem with ArborWiki as an encyclopedia of Washtenaw County is that it's too at Arbor Center. Um, the information about the area is. Uh, overwhelmingly done from the perspective of someone who uh, lives in Ann Arbor and visits the rest of the county, or maybe doesn't visit the rest of the county. Um, it means that uh, if there's a place to eat in Manchester, we may or may not know about it. It means that the home page for Ann Arbor makes sense as a home page for Ann Arbor, but there's not really a home page for Ypsilanti or Chelsea or Dexter. There's not really a, that sort of front page feeling. It looks like someone from the area cares about it and keeps it up to date. Um, it's very hard to keep business information up to date, especially small businesses, which change all the time. Businesses move and don't tell people. Businesses go out of business and don't tell people. Uh, often small businesses don't really have very good web information, so it's hard to get that. And we're not really reporters, so we're not making phone calls to confirm every scrap of detail that goes in. So it's just a, it's a matter of constant diligence to try to say, okay, if someone picked a random page from the system and looked at it, would you be embarrassed? And for the most part, the answer is no, it's not, not too bad. Uh, it's also the case that a, a random page out of 75 more pages could almost always be improved upon. So, um, you know, over seven years, it's been adding on the average of about three pages a day. There were periods of time where it grew faster. But keeping that all up to date is a, is a hard task. So, 
What's the future look like? Well, one possible future is that the project uh, doesn't change very much. It stays on the same course that it's going on, using the same software with the same um, relatively small number of people who are working on it. Um, the, The handful of pages that get edited regularly will always be up to date. Uh, people like me who care about it will care about the pieces that they care about, and some bits will get old. That's that's one possibility. We've been looking at moving to a new platform called LocalWiki. Um, LocalWiki uh, grew out of a similar project in Davis, California, uh, which has a Davis Wiki that's similar to our Wiki, except that has more, more city participation. Uh, they looked at what Wiki, the existing Wiki platforms were doing and said, hey, we can do this better because we know what we need. Uh, it has uh, better support for maps, so you can create a map much more easily. Uh, it radically simplifies how the editing step goes. So you can edit a page and not be confused by markup. Uh, and it has the energy of uh, dozens of similar projects around the area, um, where, around the area and around the country, who are all, instead of being sort of one-off things, can see themselves all sharing a common effort and, uh, and doing common things. Um, the local area project that has uh, taken up uh, local wiki is the Detroit wiki which is being organized by a fellow who was one of the founders of Marble Wiki and who's a Code for America fellow, which job he took out of college. And so, um, uh, you know, he's spending a year thinking really hard about what it means to have city information for a city as big as Detroit. If it can work for that, it should, certainly should be able to work for Washington County. Um, <coughs> there's if you wanted to make the project a little bit more uh, tractable, you would remove about um, a third of the pages in it and consolidate them into other things. Um, you know, some stuff is just not, if you, if you took the perspective of things to be, need to be a little bit more notable than just mentioned once, you could remove uh, some things. And then the biggest challenge is to find more pages that look sort of like birthday deals. You know, that everybody wants to find out about, that people are searching for all the time, uh, that uh, lend themselves to lots and lots of people contributing a little bit all the time, and that uh, don't require anyone to centrally manage yet uh, to do that. And hopefully if you're successful with, with finding another one of those, then you change the city because people start to know that they can always find out about this. And I was looking at the, the ArborWiki software um, uses Google Analytics to keep track of uh, how, uh, how many people look at the pages. And the, the biggest page that um, doesn't seem to be there is a, an apartments listing page. Um, that's a very seasonal thing, but there's a world worth of university students who are looking for a place to live. And that should be plausible that you could spend a little bit of time making a long and enormous list of every place that every apartment building or every leasing company that had was a good enough size that you want to keep track of it. And um, whether they had any spaces free <laughs> and keep that up to date by having a community contributors do that. But it's really hard. I mean, the challenge with community contribution, unless, some, unless someone is really passionate about something, <clears throat> it's really hard to get a community of people who don't see each other to rally around a task, especially an editing task. Right? It's hard enough to, vote, to contribute something. To get them to take something that already exists and make it a little bit better, that's, that's work. And uh, bringing to get people together to do this. Um, every year, uh, students come and go from the University of Michigan. And there's a U of M Wikipedia club, which we're hoping to um, get 
involved in or uh, at least invite to some of them. Um, there's a Canton Wiki, which covers Canton and Plymouth, Michigan, which has a group of people that are also supported by their local public library. Um, there's definitely an interest at the Ann Arbor District Library in keeping Arbor Wiki um, uh, afloat. Um, like I say, it could probably I could probably stop doing anything with it and have it still work up to a certain point, but it would work for the narrow nature of what it's going to And I'd really, you know, I'd really like to find more more community hubs where lots of people find it and lots of people want to contribute. So. And that's it for my prepared, my prepared stuff. Is it work like just like Wikipedia where I can just go to the site and start typing and okay, no there's, login required or anything? There's no login required. Um, if you if you log if you don't log in and try to edit a page, it'll let you do that and it'll ask you a little question. So you have to be prepared to answer a question to in order to, to log in with that. And it's local it's local information. So one of the best questions is you have to spell the uh, city of Ann Arbor mayor's name. And that's actually <laughs> that's, challenging. that's a challenge, right? <laughs> that that filters out that filters out some people who uh, might not do it. Um, but um, you know, people do just come by and edit something and leave. Um, it's as easy to create an account as it is on Wikipedia. There's no, you don't have to be vetted. You don't have to share your email address. You don't have to you know, be part of some organization. You can just do it. Do you ever notify people? Because I think I'm on there, and I think how I end up contributing is I uh, received an email that said something like your profile is updated, or you're on here, and then I check it out to make sure everything's accurate, and then I add it to it. Yeah. So um, the we do notify. If someone has created an account, there's a notification process for doing that. Mm -hmm. um, if someone in the community gets a page added, uh, sometimes we'll tell people about it and sometimes they'll just find it. Mm -hmm. Especially if they're a public figure, if they've been written about. I mean, the, the usual path for that is they've been written about in the newspaper and will, as part of the editing process, clip out or lead paragraph or something. And it's certainly I think that's happening. And you know you try to get it as accurate as you can, mm -hmm. um, but you don't. We don't always. We don't have at this point a systematic outreach <coughs> program to say, you know, like, you know, hey, we added your business to our encyclopedia. Please look at it, and if you like it, great. And if you don't like mm -hmm. it, or add more information. Add more information. Following. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's clearly if you had. If you wanted to, there's room to put more energy into not just adding to it, but improving and giving things. Mm -hmm. you, know, you could call people, verify information. You could go through. You could go through at least as much information as the Animal Observer does to do their annual city guide. Mm -hmm. You know, it's that. There's that much stuff there. I think you guys need some interns. I think we need some interns. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, it's a project that could that could absorb just labor, right? Yeah. Just I mean, it's a great internship for even journalism students. Yeah. Well, if you can think of people who would be interested yeah, in... Universities, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, four, yeah. Anyone with a journalism program, this, this makes sense. I have a question. Sure. Um, who's actually doing the support of the website and stuff that this is on? I was just wondering for admin purposes. Yeah, for admin purposes, the website is hosted at the Ann Arbor District Library. Okay, so the library is sort of supporting this? Thing. Yeah, they're supporting it. Um, it's not an official project of the library. It's not run by the library, okay, but, but it's it's on, and they've done this for a couple of other nonprofit or you know, community okay. organizations. It's running on their servers. Their staff um, maintains those servers okay. if they need to be upgraded or as I was just sort of wondering because it's like this is you know going to cost money and somebody's doing it and I was just thinking you know, like for the apartments and other things it's most of these companies have websites and stuff and it's like it's, it's too bad they just can't put a link to you know 
like a lot of these businesses that are involved and that have you know stuff and just let them know about this and have them start editing themselves. Yeah. That's what it seems like it'd be, you know, rather than a couple of people doing this, let people know about it. Yeah, so when people, we, we sometimes run into, how do, what's the best way to put this? We sometimes run into problems when people write about themselves. Not really problems, but it's a matter of tone. Um, as a rule, most of the stuff that people add to Arbor Wiki get, stays up there without challenge. And we might add it in for grammar, or for spelling, or for, for, to make sure it's in the right format, or add links to it, or whatnot. But if people contribute for the most part, we keep it there. Um, but sometimes um, people's marketing departments get involved, and they write about themselves in this amazing flowery <laughs> language. Um, and that's not, that might be appropriate for their own website, but that doesn't really make sense for the rest of our world. So um, there's a flag that we've put on some pages as uh, suspiciously upbeat. <laughs> you know, where people instead of being factual right. being our, our, our Well, okay, if somebody write a review themselves. about that, if they you, deal with it, like if it's a restaurant or somebody, a business, they're dealing with the public and, you know, they write about some stuff like that, then somebody deals with them, they can say, well, this is not all true. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this, there's definitely outreach that could be done that would, especially if you meter it out so that it matches how much resources you have to do it. Um, there's not a, at this point, there's not a one step, tell the person about this page, right? You, there's, there's not the idea of for a business who the appropriate contact is for that business. Is Arbor Wiki using like social media to promote itself in any way? Like is there a Twitter account, a Facebook page? Or like there is a Twitter account um, that at one point was set up to tweet out automatically all of the new articles that came in. Mm -hmm. um, that broke at some point. Uh, and I haven't gone back to fix it because it was, I don't remember how it did it. <laughs> But um, there are some tools out there uh, that let you, there's, there's, a, there's an automated social media <coughs> publishing tool called If This Then That, uh, I-F-T-T-T, -T, which lets you set up really simple rules that might say, uh, if this site updates an article on an RSS feed, then Twitter out that article mm -hmm. to their account. And so, you can imagine because there is a sort of a stream of new things coming mm -hmm. that you could you could update that in real time. Um, I there is an Arbor Wiki account um, which I control. I haven't figured out how to meter out my love to it to say how much work would you do with this rather than updating stuff. Again, it'd be a great intern mm -hmm. task to have to find some more followers to follow. We do, we do have a couple of long lists. There was, when Twitter was new, we made a list of all the, new, of all the Twitter accounts in town. <laughs> That's impossible to do now. You couldn't even do that. Mm -hmm. um, there, there's a list of all the bloggers in town, which I think hasn't changed as much. I've been there. Um, <laughs> Taught me a lot. There's, um, I think there's a category that automatically collects people with Yelp pages, which is help, which is helpful for us. Um, there's a few other strange. I mean, the, there's some strange things that I did, which I like. Uh, I don't know if anyone else appreciates them or not. Though. There's a there's a category for every street in the area, and so if you want to know what's next door, there's a reasonable way of doing it. Uh, anyway, at least in, in theory, you could say, you know, uh, uh, Forest Street, Nipsley, and it'll give you a new directory listing of everyone that's on that street. Um, but I found that, um, I found that helpful, so one story to tell. I was listening to the police scanner a couple nights ago, because it's something I do sometimes that night, night, and um, heard talk of a hazardous material situation down 
and south of the airport. And um, the people who were talking about it didn't say where it was. They sort of gave sort of directions, but they didn't like know what the business name was. So it's like, all right, does our Wiki know about this yet? And can I figure out where, what, what organization is involved? So you do some Googling, you do some searching, you try to find something. You, you know, come up with the likely company that had their building with nitric acid fumes. So you know, um, I wish I had already done that, right? Not have to create it later. But, um, the street organization of it meant that I had some reasonable way of saying, well, this is the place, and this is the place next door, and this is the place that was going back. No, it's, it, there's, you know, how do you organize information about a municipal a city area that's bigger than you can keep in your head? Mm -hmm. um, that's hard. And especially if you're not working, and if not, you don't have a deadline every day that forces you to know something really in depth. It's been fun to do. <laughs> uh, like I say, it's a seven years, seven years long project so far. It's probably it, it could absorb as much energy as a small team could do. I don't think it's a large team project. Um, it doesn't really require much in the way of computer people to make it work. Uh, it'd be nice to get some more institutional support. Right? It'd be nice to have a contact with Ibsen Library who was their local history person. It'd be nice to always have a go-to person like, hey, could you take a look at this for a bunch of stuff. Um, there's more supporters. Sort of would be good. Um, but then again, you know, it's useful as it is. Right? So maybe it doesn't need one thing I was looking at doing for the history part mm -hmm. is I've got a couple of books on history of Ann Arbor and one of them, a couple of them, you know, they've got pictures from 100 years ago or 50 years ago of buildings and streets and stuff. And one of the things I was thinking of doing is, you know, you've got these picture, old pictures now, you know, there hasn't been a new book out in like 50 years, six years, take a new picture of it and have the old picture with the new picture mm -hmm. uh, so people can see what it looked like way back when. There's a project, um, um, let's see, the folks at Enlightenment, which is a web design company in town, did a project called What Was There? And the way that they do it is, if you, especially if you have two photographs of the same scene, they have it set up so you can fade from one photograph to the other and see both of them, like one right on top of the other. And they've been collecting these. They also let you, I think they they attach it to um, Google Maps as well. Like right, yeah, I remember stuff. reading something about that. That was about like five, ten years ago or so. Yeah, a couple people have tried this, the similar sort of that, But that's like on a national basis? That's, that's on a right. national basis. They haven't done anything like that for I'm just specific. I was, I was looking at something just for Ann Arbor for like the local history because they've got right. the streets and stuff. And, Take pictures of it and yeah, that'd be a great project. Especially if you that. have, especially if you have old. Well, I've got the books, and you just take a picture of the book or you know scan it and then right. put that on, and then you just go out and take your camera and take a couple pictures of the new building from the same angle to different right. angles. And there's a there's a great um, photo collection at the Ann Arbor District Library that Arbor Wiki draws from in a lot of cases called the Ann Arbor Historical Signs Collection. Um, the city sign inspector in the late 60s and mostly the early 70s took hundreds of photos, maybe the low thousands of photos, of signs in the area that were illegal <laughs> in some way. And the city sign ordinance was so drastic that most of the signs were illegal. So there'd be a, there's a, the, what the result is, is a grainy 1970s era photograph, black and white, of some old building um, with a sign on the front um, that uh, would be another one of these sort of like, what does it look like now? They have a picture of the old Earl, the Earl of mm -hmm. oh, yeah. And in the 1970s, that was a rundown 
one star or maybe zero star hotel. Um, and you know, just to see how much it's changed from then till now. Mm -hmm. And there's also like an old picture of the food and dining room. Looks like it hasn't changed at all. Right. As I was just saying, it was a project, and we start out doing it, and then there's probably other people that have pictures and stuff, and yep. we used to get it going. Yeah. Yeah, projects, I mean, one of the cool things about a wiki structure is that you can start a project in it and have, you know, if you don't want to write any software, or if you just want to learn a little bit of something, you can build something that might work. And then when you've collected enough stuff that it's worthwhile doing something more fancy, mm -hmm. then you'll you can you if you if you want to do something like that, how would you do it in the besides I mean you gotta create an account, but then how would you create a new page and well, would you upload pictures directly to that or you put them on like Flickr or somewhere and then reference them or you um, can there's a create a new page right like the box bottom, at the yeah. bottom of the screen. And you just type the name of whatever you want the page to be. Okay. If it's, most things are either named after a person or a place or a thing or an event. Uh, it might be that the page already exists. Okay. So if you're, if you're uh, taking a picture of a building. Yeah. I'd probably just name it after one of the books. That was or name it after one of the historical society in that way, it's sort of. Yep. As long as the name makes, has yeah. meaning. And then um, you can upload photos to Arbor Wiki. Okay. And it again, they get a name, and then okay. there's a fairly simple syntax to embed a photo on the page, just by including the name of the photo on the page. Okay. Um, so, you know, if you wanted to try that, then you just even do them side by side or up and down. Yeah. Well, it might be one where you got the one old picture, and now you want to put five or six of them. You know, because you want to take one of the same picture, but then maybe. You want to take some pictures of the front to back or yeah. <coughs> something else. We've got uh, photos. Some folks at the Ypsilanti Historical Society did a project where they uploaded a lot of Ypsilanti historical photos and newspaper clippings, um, mostly by historic buildings. So there's stuff from the 50s through the 80s, and some of the older stuff, but mostly that's the time span that they collected. And so there's a bunch of you know, old photos of buildings or newspaper articles about the interiors of things. Or whatever. And not all of those have been fully incorporated in the wiki pages yet. So. But then once you create that page and stuff, then automatically be on a Google search and stuff like that? Okay. Yeah, it would automatically be on a Google search. Um, like I said, about two-thirds of the traffic comes from Google search. And it would be searchable from, if, if you name it right, if you name the page right, it tends to show up well for a search for that exact right, okay. name in Google. Yeah. Okay, that's good. I got something to do. <laughs> that's why I was one of the main reasons why I wanted to come because there's a couple of projects I wanted to do, and then, okay, how do you do it? Then? Yeah, well, um, you know, we can sit down with, when we're done with this, we can sit down and I can walk you through the whole, okay. the whole thing. Um, you know, it's project, if especially the, the tricky part is getting all the names right. Because it's all name driven, right? There's not really a structure to it. Everything is a big flat name space. So if you've got a, if you know what you're doing and it has a name, then you can link from that name to anything else in it. Okay. Are there any other pages that you remember using that were? I found the blog one a lot. So yeah. Because <laughs> you have to recruit local bloggers. So okay. I've been going down your list and seeing who's active and. Very helpful. Good. Yeah, we're creating a social media newswire. It's going to launch in October. Okay. It's going to be a feed of um, you know key communicators or people in the community that we want to use their um, their Twitter feed. It's going to be featured on our website. Okay. And, and blogger RSS feeds and all that. So it'll be Arbor Wiki will be a great resource to turn there to get some Twitter. You know that we we're not aware of. Really. Yeah. Yeah. The Twitter list is old. Is like I say, it's old. And mm -hmm. 
there got to be too many people using Twitter. The blogging lists, I think, people create blogs at a much slower rate than they create Twitter accounts. Good. Thank you so much for coming. Well, thanks for having me. This is great. Yeah, let me show you the whole.